Good day, welcome to Unity with Heaven. My name is Joseph, and today we are doing a devotion. And we're going to read from Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 to 16. This is the portion that talks about the salt and the light. Let's read. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. All right, that's an awesome scripture. So let's start with the first bit. You are the salt of the earth. Now, in the time of Jesus and to some extent today also, salt has a very important function, uh, especially when it comes to food. Uh, salt will enhance the flavor that food has. So in other words, if you eat a tomato and you put salt on it, it will taste even more like a tomato. If you would eat meat and you would add salt to it, it will eat, even taste more like the meat. So uh, what salt actually does, it takes the flavor that's in the food itself and it actually uh, just amplifies it. All right? uh, pepper, do, to some extent, do the same thing. Okay? You don't just taste the pepper, you actually taste the food more because you put the pepper or the salt or the pepper and salt on the food. All right? Now, the other function of salt, of course, is to preserve. And uh, they would put salt on, on all kinds of things. And when they put the salt on it, then it preserves it so that the bacteria cannot grow because a bacteria struggles to show, to grow where there's a lot of salt. Right? Uh, so that's why uh, you even have some uh, products that has like meat and they put a lot of salt on that meat. Then the meat can't really rot even if it's not uh, re refrigerated. Uh, it could even be a wound on your body uh, if there's maybe bacteria that want to bring an infection in a wound. So once you get the wound, if you put the, the salt in there, uh, it might burn, but it will stop the bacteria from growing there and you and it will stop the infection in essence. Okay? So, uh, but there's many, many applications for salt. Now let's think about this from a spiritual point of view. Okay, uh, We as children of God, sons of God, are supposed to be the preservatives that we will preserve our nations, our cultures, our traditions, our education system, uh, every every sphere of influence, the family, uh, even the the religious realm. Uh, if you talk about uh, maybe a government, you can talk about business. Uh, when the children of God are functioning in those realms, then they are salt and they preserve, they conserve that so there will not be death and destruction, but there will be life and and it will be preserved. Okay, so that's a very important function. So that's why it's important for us as Christians to stand for, for values. You know, it's important for us to say, but, you know, this is what a family is. Uh, this is who people are. This is what's important in terms of, you know, maybe babies or education, what we teach our children, what we allow them to see or not see. Uh, it's important that we have to bring God's values and that be the salt in that regard. Okay? Now, let's think about the seasoning part. So, salt would identify the flavor that's already in something and bring it forward. So, let's say... Uh, I pray for someone or I prophesy to someone and the Lord shows me, but this is their gifting. That's the call. And I speak and I say to them, the Lord says, son, daughter, I've called you to function in this gifting, to operate in this way. When you do it, then you are salt that are placed on that person and you bring out the flavor in that person's life. So that's why the prophetic ministry is so important for me, because that's one of the ways how I can bring salt on people's lives of course the ministry of encouragement is something each one of us should flourish in you're supposed to encourage your husband your wife your children your mom and dad your friend you're supposed to encourage them and say i know you can do it i'm standing here with you i'm praying for you uh, i prayed about this and i feel what the this door that god has opened up for you is the right door go through it i'm going to support you i'm going to help you i'm going to be here for you when you do that then you say i am the salt I'm helping you to bring the flavor out in your life that needs to be brought out. You know, every church 
as a serving team, people that greet people, that serve, that help with the children's church, that they help maybe help people to get some coffee or tea or whatever the, the, the serving is that people need. Maybe they need someone to pray for them. When you do that, you are the salt because you help someone else so they can become who God called them to be. And you know what's the interesting thing is? You can't salt yourself. Someone else is going to help you to bring the good things that God has put in your life out. And you can again help someone else to bring the good things that's in their life out also. You know, a lot of times you'll, you see what's in someone's life when, when the fire comes on their lives. And it's necessary then for you to come and be a support system also in their life. To be salt. All right. Now let's talk about this phrase. You are the light of the world. And it, it continues. It says, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. So let's just for a moment think about the, 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 the concept of a city that is a light that's on a hill. So why do people go to a city? People go to a city because they need a place to stay. And they need food. They, need, they want a place where they can work. They want to socialize with people. They want to be part of a community. They want to be safe. That's why people go to a city. They want to have provision. All right? And so when people see a city, they go there. And the lights of the city is, you know, people love to look at the lights of the city. And that's the promise of the supply that's in that city. And so therefore, people usually go to a city not because of religious reasons, but because they got a need that needs to be fulfilled. And so in the same way, when the Lord then says, you are a city that's on a hill, it means you need to be a source of supply. And when people come, they say, well, I need a place to stay. I need food. I need a place where I can work. I need social interaction. They'll come to a church or a community, people that love Jesus, and they, they are a light. Those people will come there, and they will get their basic needs met. met. And once their needs is met, then, of course, people will start to share with them the gospel, the love of Jesus, and then they'll ask more, and they'll get saved. So it's almost as if people first want to belong, and then afterwards they want to get saved. It was the same with Jesus. You know, Jesus went, he called all of these disciples, he said, follow me. They didn't know what Jesus was talking, they didn't know what they're going to do, they didn't know nothing about Jesus. You know, maybe a little bit. And it was only maybe three years later that, that uh, Peter said, you know, you are the son of God, we believe in you. I mean, for three years they've been there. They've ate with Jesus, they slept with, they were in community, they worked with Jesus. They got all those things that, that the person would get out of a city. And still yet they haven't joined the, the Christian faith or believed in Jesus. But as they heard the word, as they spent that time with him, they saw the miracles and they realized, but this is the son of God. They saw how Jesus spoke to the storm and it calmed down. They saw how he fed, you know, thousands of people. Then they said, well, this is the Son of God. Even the demons listen. Even the, the weather and the nature listens to him. And, they, and, 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 and Peter said, he says, you are the Son of God. And he had this revelation. You know, because Jesus asked him, who do you say I am? Okay. And so therefore, when the, the scripture says, you are the light of the world. It means you are a source of supply where people can come. They can get their basic needs met. And once those basic needs is met, then also they will see the love of God in us. And they will get saved. All right. So now, uh, of course, when we also say we're the light of the world, heaven is full of light. Everything is full of the glory of God. And so when we are the light of God, that means Jesus is inside of us. His glory, His Holy Spirit, His life, His breath of life is in us. And we are a temple of the Holy Spirit. And His glory is radiating out of our lives. And that's also part of us being the light of the world. In uh, 1 John uh, 1 verse 7, it says there, when we walk in the light, all right, um, we have communion with Him. So walking in the light uh, means we walk in the glory, in the presence of God with Him. We is in His realm. Okay? And we are the light. Uh, when you say you're also the light, because heaven is full of light, there's no darkness of light. It means you are a conduit. You are a river that are connected to that river, to the light of God. It shines into your heart. Paul says the light of God has shone into our hearts. And now the light, uh, according to Jesus, shines out of us because we are the light. Oh, let me pray for you. Father, thank you for each one that's listening. Lord, thank you that you have called us to be the salt of the earth and that you have called us to be the light. And so, Lord, we set ourselves in a position to be the light, to be that, uh, that uh, source where people can come and find uh, destiny, work, resources, communion. They can become part of the family. They can also experience the love of God. Lord, we also set ourselves to be salt, to preserve 
what is good in this earth and to make this earth look more like heaven. And Lord, to help others, to support them and to encourage them and to prophesy to them the gifts and the talents that's in their lives so they can be salted and they can bring out the flavor that's in their lives. Lord, thank you that you've given us this wonderful um, job, uh, this assignment to be the salt and the light. And so, Lord, I pray now today, Lord, that you'll fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit and with your glory. Uh, breathe your breath of life into us so that we can radiate with your light and your glory in the name of Jesus. Lord, all glory belongs to you. Amen. God bless you.